Hi everyone, Solo Guy here, and today I wanted to talk about this topic. Are complex rules more realistic than simpler rules? And with that, I want to go and mention a few games that I've played in the past and just do a quick thing uh, on the uh, idea about complexity and realism. Uh, when you look at complexity, are we talking about lots of tables, but do they give a real, realistic feeling? I think about Tactics 2. It's one of the first war games I ever played, and uh, I remember the combat charts, you know, 1 to 1, 2 to 1, and 2 to 1 if you ended up rolling a 6, I think, or a 1 that the attacker was eliminated, and all that stuff. And it was cool because it was like an introductory level thing. The rules weren't that complicated, but they did add extra optional rules if you wanted some other things in there like amphibious landings and weather and whatnot. And then, you know, moving on up, I looked at Panzer Leader and Panzer Blitz. And it was just a moving up into a little bit more complexity, but then these uh, specifically dealt with the Eastern and the Western Front. These were hex map counter type games where your basic units were platoon level, whereas for the previous game it was a divisional level. And in looking at the level of the game that you're playing, what is your basic unit representing? And in this case here, it represents... Um, Platoon level. Now, Panzer Leader arguably had some more uh, complex rules as opposed to Panzer Blitz. Um, but at the same time, Panzer Blitz was covering a longer, a larger time period uh, in comparison to Panzer Leader. But nonetheless, both of them were great in the time that they were there. And then moving on up to Squad Leader, Squad Leader arguably was the first game that I know of where they used a programmed instruction format. You read several pages of the rules, you played a specific scenario. Guards counterattack anyone, the tractor works, the Battle of Stalingrad, and really the biggie, at least for me, Hill 621 classics classic scenarios your basic unit was the squad you add the machine gun and were there complexity yeah it got to be increasingly complex okay where squad leader ended up spawning cross of iron crescendo of doom and gi anvil of victory and they kept on adding more complexity and arguably it was looking more at realism like bypass movement, like different types of ammunition that the tanks would have, like tanks would be able to fire smoke shells, uh, infantry squads being broken down into half squads, things like that, snipers. And eventually they got into advanced squad leader, and that was like the penultimate uh, of that all. And then from there they spawned on games uh, like Red Barricades, and you got into campaign games based on the actual uh, aerial recon photos where they created a uh, hex map game, and they had special rules. And of course, the rules, there was more and more rules to it, and it got more complex. But hey, you were covering some stuff in Stalingrad, but still, there was a limit. Um, are those games necessarily tournament friendly when you're looking at something like Red Barricades? Mm, I'm going to go with no, but your generic uh, scenarios that you'd find in Advanced Squad Leader and these basics, I would probably say Sure. Yeah, they were in tournaments. Um, I've done tournaments in my life. I'm not really heavily into tournaments. I do enjoy scenario games, work with teams of players. A lot of fun uh, with that. Of course, I did spend some time in uh, game sh Games Workshop. And uh, please don't banhammer me, guys. Um, I can say I did play some 40K. I did play some Necromunda. And I did play some Space Hulk. I had some great memories uh, with Space Hulk and Necromunda uh, with that, which then led me to Battleground, which now you're starting to see 28 millimeter World War II figures, but it could be played with any scale. And that got to be cool. And then it got to a point where some of my friends and I, we, we decided to go with our own uh, rule set that we worked on for a few years uh, back in the, oh gosh, early 2000s called Guts and Glory. 
And uh, we did make a few uh, additions to it, which was really cool. We did enjoy the experience, but we understood about complexity and simplicity and how much realism can you possibly uh, get in there. And of course, how many charts are you going to need in order to cover certain events? And then you go and look at something like Flames of War, um, which is now in its fourth edition, which when you think about compared to Warhammer 40k, which has been around longer than Flames of War, and they are in their ninth edition, um, Flames of War has been designed more and more for tournament play. Again, this is not a slam on tournament play, but I also think you can play regular scenarios or even historical scenarios using the Flames of War rules. <coughs> Excuse me. It's just a little bit different. But your basic unit is the platoon. So you'll have infantry platoon, you'll have armored platoons and, and whatnot. But of course, the thing to look at when you're looking at games like these is looking at the tactics. Okay, there are some tactics that on many of these games across the board, you're going to have to use. Um, things like, I have a group of infantry, I need to take that hill, that hill has got a, a couple of machine gun nests on it. If I charge the infantry out into the open, crying out, Oorah! more than likely my infantry are not going to make it to the hilltop. On the other hand, if I start popping smoke, or I order a mortar barrage, or I get armored support, now tactics are starting to come in uh, to play. But do we really need so many charts in order to resolve those incidents? And that depends on how far, how gritty of a detail that you want. If for some people, if they want to go through multiple charts to arrive at this particular result, whereas other people, if they're going through, say, one or two charts and you're arriving at a similar result, um, there's going to be different tastes for different people on that. And again, I'm not begrudging anybody. I am just saying, you know, really, are any of these games, are any of these games really simulations. They're realistic simulations. And I'm going to say no. At the end of the day, it's a game. It is a way for us to appreciate more of the history, a way to do research on certain units and figure out what colors they were and set up situations, scenarios, and see, could you do something a little bit different compared to what actually happened? Or what about what if? What if Piper's camp group actually got through to the Muz River? What if the Allied Airborne uh, divisions were totally destroyed at Normandy and our guys were stuck at the beaches? What if the Russians were able to hold on to Stalingrad and made it a lot harder for the Germans to actually get in and take 90% of the city. Those are the kinds of questions. I think, you know, you might have some fun with these games uh, to uh, play with. And it really doesn't matter the time period, as you can see here with Bolt Action and Hail Caesar and Black Powder. Okay, and then, of course, uh, this one has really come out, and the idea is to, well, we want to make it less complex, we want to make it fast playing, but give that bit of a Napoleonic feel uh, for it. So at the end of the day, I don't know, I've, I'm finding, you know, when you look at something like Warhammer 9th Edition versus One Page Rules, okay, um... I don't know, guys. I'm tending to go more toward the one-page rules. I, I tend to want to have games that are going to resolve faster. I remember years ago I went to a convention with a couple of my buddies, and we were involved in a, I believe it was a Seven Years War game, which was awesome. It was a nice uh, table, six millimeter figures, I believe, and it was a six-hour time slot. But by the time we were getting to the five and a half hour mark, we were just maneuvering our forces to go and really get into some combat that by the time the 
uh, game master had to call the game. We were just really sinking our teeth and really thinking, how are we going to go break this line? And, and, and I walked away disappointed uh, by that. And my philosophy then for game playing, unless you can leave it set up on a table that you can come back to it another night, um, I'd rather play the conclusion within a few hours or maybe, you know, it's an all day thing, but you come to a conclusion because I don't th I think there's nothing more sad than you didn't come to a satisfying conclusion, win or lose. But you have to pack up because once again, real life has trudged in. Hey, this is Solo Guy. I hope this uh, benefited you. Hey, make comments. Let's talk and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. You take care. God bless you and have an awesome day.